in this problem, we have a lift that C that can only move vertically um, attached to two arms, arm AB and arm BC. We're given the angular acceleration and angular velocity of link AB, and we're given the angles uh, with respect to the vertical of both linkages, link AB and link BC. And we're asked to find um, the velocity and acceleration of the lift, so uh, point C. So again, I will draw in the coordinate system. So x will be positive to the right, y will be positive up, and the positive rotation is counterclockwise. So and uh, again, because in this negative convention here will follow um, it being into the page. Um, so we're going to start with our solution. So there's two ways of uh, solving this question. There's, we can use the method of um, finding the um, velocity, linear velocity and acceleration at point B, and then constraining the velocity of C to only be in the vertical direction, and then relating these two to find uh, omega and alpha of link BC, as well as the velocity of an acceleration of C. Um, but we can, in this um, question, we're gonna use the time derivative method which is um, essentially where we select a length or a desired um, distance that changes in time, and we take the derivative, the first derivative to get the velocity, second derivative to get the acceleration, um, and that essentially is our acceleration and velocity for that point. Mm -hmm. So um, again, when we use the time derivative method, we always have to pick a distance. Um, between a point that is stationary, so that doesn't move, and the point of interest, so the point that we're interested in the movement. And again, this distance cannot change in direction. It has to keep a constant direction. So in this case, um, this distance is going to be between C and, and A. So A is the stationary point, and C is the point of interest. Um, and so this here, um, as drawn in this diagram over here, will be um, our length of interest, and we'll call this L. Uh, so L is the distance between point C and um, point A. So again, the rate of change of L is the same as the velocity of point C um, in the vertical direction, because there's only the velocity in the vertical direction. Um, and so again, we have to find this distance L so that distance in terms of the variables of this ge geometrical system. So in terms of theta and the lengths of the two arms. Um, so And we're given all of that information so we can easily find that. Uh, so L is going to be equal to uh, 0 0.2 cos of theta uh, plus 0 0.4 cos of phi. And this is going to be, again, in meters. OK, uh, so I essentially just took the uh, cosine of uh, this length here and the cosine of this length here to give us the full height. OK, now I can take the first derivative with respect to time, knowing that theta and phi change with time um, because everything is rotating. Uh, so we can take that derivative. So um, dl, uh, dl over dt is going to be equal to um, negative 0 0.2 sine of theta. And then we have a theta dot. And that is because of the um, chain rule in there. Because theta, again, changes with time. Minus 0 0.4 sine of phi, phi dot, okay? Um, and all of this will be in meters per second. Now, we can take the second derivative, and that'll give us the acceleration. So this here is going to be equal to um, velocity of L, which is equal to velocity of C. Okay, 
if we take d l d squared l over d t squared, so the second derivative, essentially we're deriving this equation here again. Um, here we're going to use the product rule um, and again also the chain rule. Um, so we get the following negative 0 0.2 cos theta theta dot squared minus 0 0.2 sine theta theta double dot minus 0 0.4 cos of phi phi dot squared minus 0 0.4 sine of phi phi double dot. This is going to be equal to um, a l which is equal to a of c. Okay and the units for this whole equation will be meters per second squared. Okay um, so again to reiterate this here is the derivative of this and there's two terms because we're doing the product rule and then we also have the chain rule and that's why we get this square term um, and then again these two terms are the derivative of this same exact method just different angle and different value here um, now we can essentially plug things in so we have theta we have theta dot um, and we have theta double dot we also have phi, but we're missing a few things. So we don't have phi dot, and we do not have phi double dot. Um, and so we can't directly plug in and get values. But um, if you look at the system, the system is constrained, right? Um, C here can't move to the left or right. Um, so in this case, we need to add that constraint to our calculations, because right now, uh, these equations don't constrain C for moving in the horizontal direction. Okay, so if we apply that constraint, then we'll have, we can solve for uh, phi dot and phi double dot and get those unknowns from this extra equations. So the way we constrain it is we say that the distance between C and A has to be set. So again, C and A are offset a little bit right? Um, and even if they weren't offset, if they were perfectly aligned, C, the horizontal distance, the horizontal placement of C with respect to A should always be constant. So C here and A here, the distance between them should always be constant. Okay, so we're going to call this um, X. And X is essentially going to be this distance between the two. Okay, that is called X. And that distance needs to be constant, so the velocity needs to be zero, and again, the acceleration needs to be zero. So we're going to do the same exact process we did um, with um, L. We derive it, and then instead of just having a value, we equate it to zero. And same thing with the acceleration, it's going to be zero. So let's do that same process for x. So x is going to be equal to, instead of cosines here, we're going to have sines. Um, and um, again, because we're going to subtract the two, so we're going to take this component here um, and subtract this whole thing to get this little distance, uh, subtract this distance here. Um, so let's do that. We're going to have 0 0.4 sine of phi minus 0 0.2 sine of theta. And again, this is all in meters. So again, to reiterate, this distance x is this distance here, the offset distance between the two. Um, and that has to be constant. So essentially what I did is the first sign comes from the whole length over here. Um, and um, I subtract um, this, the length from this point to here. And the subtraction leads me to this point because this distance this thing here minus this whole thing minus this whole thing over here gives me this little distance. So if we take the derivative and equate it to zero, um, we can solve for phi dot. Okay, so we have vx is equal to dx over dt. And if we take this derivative, we get 
0 0.4 cos of phi phi dot minus 0 0.2 cos theta theta dot okay and again this is going to be equal to 0 right um, and all the terms in this equation are meters per second now we can, since we equate it to zero, we have uh, phi, we have theta, we have theta dot, we can solve for phi dot. And so if we solve for it, we get that, um, I'm not gonna plug in the values manually, but we get that um, phi dot is equal to 0 0.2 uh, cos of theta, theta dot over 0 0.4 cos of phi, which is equal to negative 2.304 radians per second. Okay. So now we have solved for phi dot. We now, what remains is phi double dot over here. And then we're set to plug everything into these equations. Okay. So the way we solve for it is again the velocity of x needs to be zero so this distance here needs to be set um, so that this point c doesn't travel in the x or y direction now we also have to set its acceleration to zero so we take the derivative of this or the double derivative of that uh, so again ax is going to be equal to negative 0.4 sine phi times phi dot squared plus 0 0.4 cos of phi times phi double dot plus 0 0.2 sine of theta theta dot squared minus 0 0.2 cos of theta theta double dot and again these derivatives were taken in the same method that we did before. Um, and now we can equate this to zero. And again, everything in this equation is in meters per second squared. Um, when we equate this to zero, we are going to, um, we can solve for this uh, phi double dot. Because we have phi dot from what we just got, we have phi, we have um, theta, and we have theta dot, we have theta double dot. So we can plug everything in and uh, get the following. 0 0.4 sine of 20 degrees. Um, times negative 2.304 radians per second and this is going to be squared minus 0 0.2 sine of 30 degrees times negative 5 squared plus 0 0.2 cos of 30 degrees negative 7 It's going to be all divided by 0 0.4 cos of 20. And essentially, you can solve for this, and we get that phi double dot is equal to negative 7.945 radians per second squared. Okay. And now we have all of our unknowns. So again, this here is phi. Um, and we can plug them into these equations to solve for VC and AC. We just plug all of those in. And so if we do that, we get the following. VC is going to be equal to negative 0 0.2 uh, meters times sine of 30 degrees times negative 5 and this radians per second 
um, minus 0 0.4 meters times sine of 20 degrees times 0 0.2 meters cos of 30 degrees times negative 5 radians per second divided by 0 0.4 meters times cos of 20 degrees. And so Vc is going to be equal to 0 0.815 meters per second. And we have Vc, now we can solve for uh, AC, and AC is going to be equal to, if we plug everything in, that is 0 0.2 meters times cos of 30 degrees times negative 5 radians per second, this is to the power of 2, uh, minus 0 0.2 meters times sine of 30 degrees times negative 7 radians per second squared. And then we have, I'm going to go on the next line, minus 0 0.4 meters times cos of 20 degrees times negative 2.30 meters per second to the power of 2 minus 0 0.4 meters sine of 20 degrees uh, times negative 7.944 five sorry meters per second squared. And if we solve for this, we get that AC is equal to negative 4.54 meters per second squared. And so that's our final answers, VC and AC.